Remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to show support for the show, check out the video description for a link to our Buy Me a Coffee website thing. We appreciate any and all support that you've given us so far, and hopefully we'll continue to in the future. Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, answering another question. Rock and roll. How do you get smooth black and gray when you're dipping between ink caps? Thanks, Dwayne. Let's answer this. <laughs> All right, now that that's over with, I left my black on the table over there. How do we get smooth blacks and grays when dipping between our caps? Now, this is, it's kind of basic, but at the same time, it's really gonna be grouping dependent when you're doing this, right? Because if you're trying to get smooth transitions when you're using a three round liner, the technique is gonna be a lot different than just going between your caps, right? Like if we're doing this right now, we're gonna make the assumption that this is for a mag, right? We won't even talk about flats or, or rounds or loose rounds or any of the other stuff we're gonna be talking about, stacks, stuff like that. So <clears throat> I see a lot of people trying to do this and, and what's happening when they're doing this is they're trying to probably like dip in, let's we'll say this one's 100% black, this one's 30. It was 15 and this was five. What they're trying to do is, is create a transition between a dark spot and something that's lighter, right? By just creating gradation. The amount of little holes filled with dense pigment getting to less dense as it moves along that line, right? So when we're dipping between caps, and, and this is, you know, I guess everyone's gonna have their own way of doing it. The easiest way to do this is to literally rinse each time. Don't actually dip, right? Because every time that you dip back and forth, you're going to be changing those concentrations. And that's going to be making it difficult to try and create consistent tones, especially with larger pieces, that are going to look natural or at least fit whatever image that you're trying to do, right? Because normally what I would say is you're going to go in and you're going to find your image, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to create dotted lines surrounding sections that we know are going to be 100%, right? Some that will be 30, some will be 15, some will be 5. And you know, whatever values you can find inside of those, you're going to be creating multiple different, you know, saturation levels or dispersions of that pigment to fit each one of those. It's a paint by number thing, right? And we're not actually trying to blend over top of stuff. This is just budding color. When you find one spot that is gonna butt up to another. Let's say this one is 75%, you know, on value that you've found, and this one's 30. The transitions that are gonna come through here are not gonna happen instantaneously, and if we do create a smooth transition, usually what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a block or an area inside of it that five to 10 years down the road has been overworked, so what we're gonna see is an increasing amount of actual leaching of the color. What we want is actually for these two bits to be butted up next to each other, so that five feet, everything looks fine. And at five to 10 years, when the skin hasn't, it has, it's had a consistent amount of trauma, these colors are gonna end up naturally blending into each other, creating a smooth transition. Pretty cool, hey? But I don't think that's what your question was. Although it is kind of the easiest way to do this is just not worry about it. <laughs> but if we're just trying to do a small jammer, you know, something that's pretty quick and simple, we're gonna set out some extra ink caps here, right? And we're just gonna fill them with water. Boop, boop, boop. So while we've got our pigments set up through this that are gonna be very measured, and very consistent with everything, what we're gonna be using to create those smooth transitions are these extra ink caps of water. Now, if we have each one of these is three quarters of the way filled with something, blah, 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 depending on the grouping that you're using. We'll say it's a seven mag, boink. If we start off by doing our dark fills with everything we have our 100%, we know inside the tube, we're going to have a bunch of sticky stuff when we're done with that, all stuck inside the tube that's going to be 100% black, regardless of where the needles are, right? Blah, 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 blah. So what we'll do is we're gonna take that 100% black because we're gonna be working from dark to light in this application specifically, and we're gonna rinse it off in one of the ink caps. Pretty simple, right? So we know that we're gonna have a certain quantity or volume of color that's in there, especially there's also gonna be some blood and tissue and things like this, which is gonna make it a little bit nasty. We need to rinse it out anyways. We're gonna be putting it in one of those H2O caps. Now, 
All you do is grab a paper towel once you've given it a rinse and you're going to see that it's going to dilute that color into the water, making a wash, right? A dispersion. And we're just going to wipe it across a paper towel. Then actually grab our cup of water that we had before, boop, give it a good rinse, clean it off really well and dip in our 30, you know, give it a little shake or whatever and wipe it next to it. If it comes out darker, we know that we can label this as greater than 30%, right? So this is gonna be our blend between these two. And we're gonna work our way forward from dark to light or from our densest concentration to the lightest concentration doing the same thing. We'll sit here and we'll do our blends coming off of this then take our 30, blend back over top. And then once we finish that, we know that after we've had enough time to rinse, clean this out, we're gonna have our 30% that's gonna be stuck in there and we're gonna add it to our next ink cap. We're gonna rinse it out, do the same thing, wipe on paper towel, rinse, come back in, and then we'll touch this. Is it gonna be darker or lighter? It's going to be lighter, of course, so that means that this one is going to be greater than 15%. Right? Because we can test it, pretty simple. And we're just gonna lather, rinse, and repeat while we're doing this. Taking each one of these and doing a one quarter overlap with each one of the sections that we're doing to build a smooth gradation as we go. Now, if you have spots where the lines are really chunky and they're not blending really well, so you're getting, you're getting this kind of skipping effect where something looks like, let's use another color here, where something looks like you've got these lines kind of coming through, that's showing you that you have too much pigment going into those spaces, right? So you've got to end up fanning off of them in between the spaces to actually get them to gradate down to look smooth. Now, this is really, really technical and super tricky to do because these spots aren't just darker like if you've used, I don't know, whatever analogy you want to throw in there. Really what they are is it's a greater aggregation of actual pigment, right? You're going to have more in this spot, less than that, more in this, less than that, more in this. So you have these skips. And if you decide just to try and keep going over to try and smooth it out, it's just going to get darker and darker and darker and more saturated, more saturated, more saturated. So. What you have to actually do is not focus on these spots. This is where that pendulum shading is gonna come in handy. You're gonna hit center point between them and pendulum shade back and forth with a lower dispersion than you're working with to slowly increase that concentration of color or black pigment or whatever that is being added to the skin and it'll feather it out. So this is not the most efficient way to do it, especially when you get to large scale, um, but it can be done and it can teach you a little bit, especially about your stuff that's just working, right? If you're going through these things and you're like making these, you know, partial dispersions based on mixing with already preset dispersions into just water, take note of where you think those values are at the end of one of your tattoos, right on the dental bib or something you have set out for your, your setup or on a piece of paper or whatever, and then start making these dispersions in bottles, right? You can buy bottles. And just run them through the clave, get them all cleaned up. And you just literally start with your solid black, right? You get your black bottle, boop, boop, boop. And you'll have your little one or two ounce bottles next to it. And what we do is this. Let's say we know we want to have a 30% wash. We take the total measurement of this side. We cut it into 30%. We fill that up. 30% with solid black, get up the last 10% with distilled water, and the last bit as your alcohol. Right. Now, if we want to mix down off that, we know we've got a 30% blend, right? We want to get 15%, simple enough. We're going to do this same bottle to that using the same values that we want to get off this mathematically, mixing down. So you're going to end up with less full on each of these which is kind of nice, but you're gonna have custom pre-made dispersions all the way down, as many as you want that are going to be easier to dispense and apply so that when you're doing your tattoo, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Anyways, last thing with this, if you're doing your blacks and grays, you're not gonna be working the same way that you normally would with color when you're trying to blend. Let's say you have a start and a stop here, and your needles are moving this way when you're fanning or waving or fucking digging in or whatever the hell you're doing to do your shading. When you do your one third overlap, you're not starting in the same direction off this. You're gonna be coming back into it. It's back and forth, right? 
you're going to have these taper lines off this where things are solid saturated, where if you start the same spot on this, you're naturally going to end up with those lines and chopping I was talking about before. You have to fan and shade back into it. That way you're decreasing the concentration of this stuff as it comes in and you're relying on the value of where it should be when it's light where you start rather than starting and continually moving like this. So if we know that this is 100% here, this would be a 30% line. So we know we can full saturate this and start whipping it back into it. So if we need to build up the values, all we have to do is just keep moving that line forward until we get a smooth blend. And if we keep doing that to where this is a 15%, we'll be able to eliminate those really hard chops with the overlays that we've got. That's it. Basic shading, dip in between caps. Let us know what you think, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And yeah, you can buy us a coffee too. If, we, uh, if you like what we're doing, find a link in the show description. Anyways, that's it. It's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.